Welcome back to Hunky Vape. I'm DJ Alex, and this is your Hunky Vape 5 on Friday Vaping News Science and Advocacy Report for the 22nd of January, 2021. On the news today, US FDA sends a shot across the bow for 10 companies and 100,000 products. Simultaneously, U.S. Customs and Border Protection begin clamping down on ports of entry for unauthorized, unauthorized products. We don't know what products are authorized or not authorized in this country because of the uh, PMTA process. However, they're already cracking down. Confiscations in Dallas, Fort Worth from China and Chicago's O'Hara International Airport from Hong Kong stopped 84,000 units of vape gear worth $1.1 million from entering the U.S. market. Massachusetts flavor ban and 75% vape excise tax only accomplished two things. It forced Massachusetts residents to go spread COVID-19 to neighboring states who were still selling what consumers really wanted. And it cost the state of Massachusetts more than $10 million a month in lost tax revenue. The states of New England, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Maine, thank you for your short-sighted decision-making. Governor Cuomo, your obtuse alignment with the same draconian policy disproportionately impacts communities of color and costs New York millions of dollars as well. But so what? Exorbitant tax rates and bans guarantee the black market grows exponentially and primarily benefits the largest global producer of tobacco, China. Want an example of this? Well, let's take a look at a story from Hong Kong where their customs agent seized 8.9 million illicit cigarettes and 600,000 heat not burn cartridges because of unpaid exorbitant excise taxes. Moving on to international news, UK VIA calls for click and collect reprieve in Scotland because not including vape shops as essential services during the lockdowns has now resulted in a quarter of Scottish smokers. 26% actually, smoking more because they do not have access to their safer nicotine products. Seriously? Now even the UK is punishing people who smoke but want to quit? How quickly people forget. Just two years ago, the BBC reported that there are almost 3 million people successfully using electronic cigarettes to stay away from deadly combustible cigarettes. As the key weapon in the NHS's arsenal, it should always be made readily available to help more people quit smoking. Hello? Where's your science-based policy making now? For a bit of good vaping news, based on science, we'll take a look at Milan, Italy, where the freedom to smoke may be up in smoke, but the freedom to vape remains strong. For our science segment, we once again have another doctor react to the World Health Organization's policy on electronic cigarettes. Respiratory medicine doctor Nick Hopkinson at the National Heart and Lung Institute, Imperial College London, reminds us electronic cigarettes are substantially safer than smoking because toxic substances present in combustible smoke are absent or present at much, much, much lower levels in vaping. Now, for those of you that are feeling down because of all the bad news every week, I bring you a message from Vaporesso. Together we can. And for some sheer vaping pleasure, I'm going to ask you a curious question. Would you be interested in using Big Mac flavored vape to satisfy your craving during lockdown? Dave Skyke says he's vaping it. And the highlighted advocacy group for this week covers India, Australia, Malaysia, 
Philippines, Taiwan, Thailand, and the entire Southeast region of China. The CAFRA Coalition. Lastly, I call your attention to an Inside Sources opinion piece titled, Biden has a duty to nicotine users. Joe, you partook in the cavalcade of Obama's meandering path to the PMTA regulatory deadline. Then supposedly, pro-business President Trump appointed agency executives and rubber-stamped panic-driven regulations that presented vaping in draconian, sacrilege point of view terroristically advancing the outbreak of moral panic tenfold. Yes, in broad daylight, Trump literally slaughtered thousands upon thousands of small businesses. Mom and pop shops founded through very personal quit smoking success stories. Shops founded to get other smokers to successfully quit their deadly combustible tobacco habit. Joe, I implore you to realize now is the time for you to honorably stem the moral panic and adopt science-based policy, which encourages harm reduction. Thousands of small businesses run by ex-smokers and millions of people who smoke but want to quit their deadly habit. All of their lives and livelihoods, depending on you, having the basic human decency to let people have the fundamental human right to a safer alternative. Okay, enough with the pragmatic dogma. Let's get into the news. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, here's where we stand today. Here's the pre-market tobacco product applications. And it hasn't changed since September. Now, all the news today comes from the Trump administration because Joe Biden didn't take office until just two days ago. Okay? 15,437 PMTA applications were submitted to the FDA. Do we have a list of what products are authorized for sale in this country? No? Why not? There has been zero progress on this whatsoever. So if you're an independent vape shop owner, you have no clue which one of your products you can continue to legally sell in this country. And which one of your products, because they're illegal, could literally cost you everything that you own. It's time to get off their butts and do something. Yeah? Well, they did something, but it's not good. Here comes a shot across the bow. FDA warns firms to remove unauthorized e-liquid products from the marketplace. Yep, they sent out letters. Here's a list of the companies that received letters. Little House Vapes, Castle Rock Vapor, Drop Smoke, Perfection Vapes, CLS Trading, Vape Dudes Headquarters, Session Supply Company, Coastal E-Liquid Laboratory, GC Vapors, Dr. Criminy, Dr. Criminy's V-Liquid, CMM Capital, ETX Vape, and E-Sig Barn. They all got warning letters. And the warning letters contain 100,000 vape products. You see, every single UPC code is a separate product. So, this product here, yeah, that's one, two, three, four products contained right here in my hand. Is it legal to be sold in the United States? Nobody knows, because the FDA hasn't told us who submitted applications and of the applications that they submitted, how many of those products are legal for sale in this country? It didn't stop the FDA from sending letters out to these 10 businesses. Yep. 
And in further efforts to prevent youth access to electronic cigarettes, the FDA and the U.S. Customs and Border Protection announced earlier this week that they have seized 33,681 units of counterfeit, unauthorized electronic cigarettes coming from China to Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. They had a manufacturer's suggested retail price of $719,453. Wonder what the uh, people that place that order are thinking right now. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't stop there. Going right to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection website, we see that they have a press release they put out yesterday from Chicago. Chicago O'Hare's International Mail Branch seized 50,000 Dragster Mountain Vape Pens. The shipment originated from Hong Kong and was destined for a residence in Alexandria, Kentucky. FDA determined that the shipment violated the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act because they were misbranded consumer goods being imported by an unauthorized agent. Tobacco products imported or offered for import in the United States must comply with applicable laws. So... There's their shipment, and you can say goodbye to it. As the manufacturer's suggested retail price value of $450,000. So for the poor bastard that ordered this stuff, and now it's confiscated, you're out of luck. And I hope you have a good lawyer, because you will be going to court. Taking a look at Massachusetts, here we have an article from uh, Americans for Tax Reform showing the success of the Massachusetts flavor ban. Oh, well, it wasn't really a success. It was more like a disaster. Yeah. Six months ago is when they decided they were going to implement this lovely flavor ban. And what has it accomplished so far? Well, the state of Rhode Island, Rhode Island and New Hampshire have been some of the biggest beneficiaries of the Massachusetts ban, collecting close to $50 million in additional revenue because when you ban it and people want it, they're going to go get it. If they got to drive a couple hours to a neighboring state to buy it, they're going to buy it. And they're going to bring it back home and use it. So what did your flavor ban accomplish? What does prohibition ever accomplish? Creates a thriving black market. That's about it. Yeah. And if you know you're a resident of Massachusetts and you don't even smoke or vape, and you're, you're down on your luck right now because, you know, you lost your job, you're restaurant that you work for is boarded and shuttered because of COVID precautions. But you got a little bit of money in the bank. Go across state lines, buy a bunch of stuff, load it in your trunk, come back, get on social media. Hey man, I got some stuff. Get hold of me if you're interested. Selling it right out of your trunk, making a fortune. Tripling your money one day, make more money than you normally made in a whole month. You think people aren't going to do that? Citizens Against Government Waste published an article. Massachusetts tobacco flavor ban simply shifted markets. Yup. And what else happened? Cigarette excise tax stamp sales dropped 23.9% in Massachusetts, while New Hampshire gained $28.5 million, or almost 30% additional tax revenue. Rhode Island gained $12 million in additional tax revenue, or an 18.2% increase in their excise taxes that they collected. The estimated Massachusetts loss, including sales tax, is $73 million in six months. And Rhode Island saw a $14 million gain. 
your flavor bands are not going to work because people will want the product and they're going to go and get it. Prohibition will never work. And it primarily affects communities of color. Once again, disproportionately taking communities of color and forcing them to illegal activities where they're now going to be considered criminals and thrown in jail. And you wonder why communities of color have a disproportionately higher percentage in America's jails? They need to get off their high horse. Here's Vape Hong Kong. Look at all of those cigarettes. Mm hmm. Vape Hong Kong. Hong Kong Customs sees 20. Six million dollars of illicit cigarettes and unpaid heat not burn products. All of that was confiscated simply because they didn't pay to put their tax stamp on the packages. They didn't pay their taxes because the taxes cost more than the actual product does. Take a look in Scotland. UK VIA calls for click and collect reprieve in Scotland. See, UK is under another lockdown for COVID-19 to mitigate the situation of the rising number of cases of COVID-19. And unfortunately, the politicians decided that Vape shops are not going to be considered essential services, therefore they must be shuttered as long as, as well as the rest of the shops around town. So what is that going to do? It's going to drive these ex-smokers back to smoking. A quarter of Scottish smokers, 26%, said that they had been smoking more heavily since the first lockdown in March. And now that all these vape shops are shuttered, what are they going to do when they run out of stuff? When they no longer have the e-liquid for the vaporizers? They're going to go down to the corner shop and pick up a pack and start smoking again. There's no way the UK is ever going to achieve a smoke-free society if it takes the safer nicotine product and prevents it from being for sale. Here's the article I was talking about, published in the BBC. Electronic cigarettes can be key weapon against smoking, says the members of parliament, says the government, NHS, and their Stoptober uh, campaign that goes on every October. What happened to the day when they recognized a safer nicotine product. Electronic cigarettes could even be licensed as medical devices and you can get a prescription for it. And with the National Health Service, they can actually provide that to their residents. There's vape shops in hospitals where they dispense vape gear because it is 95% safer than deadly combustible cigarettes. And because it's safer, you're going to have less health consequences. And therefore, it's going to be cheaper to run a health system, a nationwide socialized healthcare system, when you don't have as many people getting sick. What happened to policies based on science in the UK? If used correctly, electronic cigarettes could be a key weapon in the NHS stop smoking arsenal. But they let Bloomberg infiltrate them and get that nasty money in there so they can keep selling more cigarettes. Looking over at Milan, Italy, freedom to smoke is up in smoke. There's a ban on smoking in many outdoor public places that came into force in the Italian city of Milan on Tuesday. But some residents were not even aware of the rule. 
what makes this outdoor smoking ban be actually a good thing? Well, when they enacted the ban, they stated that the ban was to reduce the PM10 fine particles, which are harmful to lungs and protect the health of citizens against active and passive smoking in public places. PM10 refers to the fact that when the particle size is smaller than 10 nanometers, it causes damage. The particle size in vaping is much bigger than that. And everything that goes into an electronic nicotine delivery system is water soluble. So it doesn't hurt you. So you're no longer allowed to smoke in public places. Many open air public places, such as parks, stadiums, bus stops, and even cemeteries. And if you're caught doing it, caught breaking this new law, the fines will range from 40 to 240 euros, or $48 to $290. And they're gonna be introducing this gradually. So as that become people become aware of it, the fines are gonna be a lot stronger. Now for our science segment. Once again, we have to have a doctor stand up and say, excuse me, what are you doing? Questioning the World Health Organization once again. World Health Organization, you want some good laughs. Go look at their Q&A on electronic cigarettes. It's a hoot. Every single sentence in there is a practical bold faced lie. What does Dr. Nick Hopkinson from the Respiratory Medicine at the National Heart and Lung Institute Imperial College London have to say? We know that electronic cigarettes are substantially safer than smoking because the toxic substances present in cigarette smoke are either completely absent or present at much lower levels. Evidence from randomized control trials shows clearly that electronic cigarettes can help smokers quit. Smokers who switch completely to vaping will gain a significant health benefit. And long-term use of electronic cigarettes is not completely harmless, but it's still 95% safer than smoking deadly combustible cigarettes. And it says that so people who vape should aim to quit that too at some point, although not at the expense of going back to smoking, which is what's happening in Scotland when they shutter the vape shops. You can take a look at the article yourself. There'll be a link in the description below. Now for some good news. Vaporesso's Back in the News Again releases... Together We Can video to bring confidence and empower the vaping community. There are moments in life that test your resolve, states the one minute video, referring to the fact that vape shops have been facing significant challenges during the pandemic and the burgeoning government regulations. There are moments in life that are a test to your resolve. They could have done a better job with the audio to this. However, there'll be a link in the description below. Check it out. It's actually a two-minute video, and it's worth the watch. Okay, now for my other question that I asked earlier. Would you be interested in vaping a Big Mac-flavored e-liquid? Well, here's a gentleman who said that he's vaping it. See, he was locked down, in a lockdown, and he couldn't go out to get his McDonald's Big Mac that he really wanted. So, he decided that he was going to try and figure out a way to create an e-liquid that reminded him and satisfied his craving for his Big Mac. And he spent months perfecting the recipe. 
but he eventually got it. It took him over 25 tries to get the recipe the way that he thinks a Big Mac tastes. Pretty interesting. And this is what's going to end up happening for a lot of people. I know it's happened already for a lot of people that live in New York. Governor Cuomo decided that he was going to ban all flavored vapes. And a lot of the vape shops initially weren't honoring it, and they were sending it in until, guess what? When your package gets confiscated, because it's not considered a legal item, it's a prohibited black market item, and you start getting letters stating that you have to pay these fines for importing these illicit products, it's going to make you take a different path. So you're going to order things that are perfectly legal, and you're going to put them together yourself. I mean, if they made brownies illegal, you just go buy the flour and the chocolate and the eggs and the oil, and you would make your own brownies. You don't have to buy brownies to make your own. Yeah, if you had the choice, it's easier just to buy one and eat it. Same as it is with e-liquid. But because there's only four basic ingredients that go into e-liquid, propylene glycol, vegetable glycerin, the nicotine if you use it, and flavoring, people are making their own. It's the hobby aspect of vaping, and that's why no matter what they do and how illegal they try and make it, there's people that are still going to do it. And if they got to make their own, then that's what they're going to do. They're going to make their own. Well, I thought it was pretty interesting. Dave Skikes, I commend you for your ingenuity. And to be honest, as much as I like a Big Mac, I'm not sure I want to vape it. All right, let's take a look at our chosen advocacy group for this week. It is CAFRA. CAFRA is the Coalition of Asia-Pacific Tobacco Harm Reduction Advocates. And it's an alliance between the tobacco harm reduction advocates and their respective organizations in the regions that they live. And this includes Australia, Taiwan, and all the other countries in this region. And here is their rights and responsibilities an individual's right to health is recognized as a fundamental international human right. Realize that smoking causes the vast majority of tobacco-related death and disease. Recognize that vaping is dramatically safer than cigarettes and has millions, helped millions of people quit smoking. They would rather you regulate vaping than outright ban it. And it's forcing people to rethink the dogma that has been shoved down people's throats. The inaccurate dogma. And that leaves us to our final opinion piece. This is published in Inside Sources. And it's published by Michael McGrady, who has written numerous articles talking about Digital civil, civil Liberties, Science, Harm Reduction Policy, and the Ethics of Public Health and Public Health Policies. He's a visiting fellow in harm reduction at the American Consumer Institute Center for Citizens Research. It's a very enlightening article. The coming presidency of Joe Biden is a new chapter in American history, hopefully closing a divisive chapter of hate among fellow citizens and a lack of basic human decency in the Oval Office. That means new regulations, new executive orders, and President Biden's highly anticipated legislative priorities for domestic policy. Since the world has faced the scourge of a deadly COVID-19 pandemic, one of the main issues for voters is the protection of public's health during these turbulent times. And he talks about how the policies during the Obama administration and 
the policies that were enacted or regulated during the Obama administration that started as way back as the Clinton administration were all something that he oversaw and was a part of to some degree or another. Joe Biden's been in office for a long time, and there's a lot of people that were hesitant to vote for him because of that fact. These career politicians lose sight of what it's like to be a common citizen in society. And people wonder whether he's going to be able to take a scientific point of view, an objective point of view, and do what's good, do what's the greater good for all of mankind. Well, take a look at this article yourself. I know you got the gist of it from my um, statements at the very beginning of this news report. And all we have at this point is hope. Because history is being written as every moment passes. Every minute that passes, every day that passes. Only time will tell where we stand four years from now. Only time will stand where we stand four weeks from now. And we have to have hope. Hope for a better tomorrow. And that's what I'm asking you guys all to go do. Go be an advocate. Stand up for what's right. Stand up for what you believe in. And keep on vaping. That's it for me. Have a great day.